Hello, my friends. I'm glad to see you made it. For you gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. Today, my friends, a uh, little bit different. Not really preaching or, or teaching. Just telling you a, a little bit about who I am and where I come from and why it is that I do the things I do. You notice today I got my glasses on and, and uh, you know, if you ever met me, in my hometown at the grocery store or walking up down the street or wherever at church or whatnot <laughs> this is what you, what you would see and this is what I, how you would see me you know pretty much mostly all the time now now I have a few other shirts that I wear and summertime's coming and mostly Jesus shirts and they got Jesus or something written on them so like a walking billboard for Jesus and uh, it's always a great opportunity to, to use that to break the ice, you know. <laughs> Somebody comments on your shirt or something, and then there you go, you have the opportunity to talk to somebody. But for the most part, you know, this is this is who I am, this is my clothes. I, I got about four white shirts and a blue shirt <laughs> and a couple others, and that's about it. And you can see, you know, I... Did just dig this out of the trash so you guys could, you know, as I could cry and say, look at my hole in my shirt. No, this is just my clothes. And this is who I am. So, you know, maybe that's why a lot of times in life, you know, when people meet me, they're a little bit turned off by me. You know, they see, uh, can only see my clothes, can only see the outer side of me, you know. And sometimes I don't even have a hat. And a lot of times, you know, I always wear booty. I, I, I like my head to be covered or whatever it is or I'll wear my hoodie and wherever I go it doesn't matter. Maybe I have a hat and sometimes I, I just wear it like this. <laughs> it don't matter, you know, I just like to be uh, in, in my spot and for me this is the, the covering that the clothes God gave me to wear so, so uh, I wear them, that's what I wear. And uh, you know, sometimes in life, I, I, as for me, I wonder, you know, why it is I do the things I do. <laughs> you know, I, I really don't get a reward for it or, or nothing out of it. I make these videos and do that for, for you. And uh, a lot of it, actually, my motivation, in, and I'm just going to take my glasses off because of the glare from the light. And uh, a lot of my motivation comes from my, my love for, for the boys that, that live here in my house. You, you get to see the videos, but you don't get to see me or, or know much about me or, you know, you think, I don't know, I just sit around, do nothing but make videos. And, you know, a little bit of that is true, but not all of that. And, and you know, I want you to know I, I have a, a son, and he's 19 years old, and and then I ha his friend lives here, and he's uh, 19 years old, and his other buddy, his friend, he pretty much just lives here, and, you know, he's 16 years old. And, and so we got all these boys here, and, and plus uh, myself and, and uh, my mother and my father live here. And at any given time, not every single day, but most every day, uh, there is anywhere between 8 to 10, 12 people here in, in our home every day. And uh, sometimes not, but pretty much every day. <laughs> and, and I work for Jesus. So, so for me, working for Jesus is being available to the will of God each and every day, which is totally different each and every day. And, you know, uh, people ask, people wonder, you know, how do you, how do we do this? How, how do you do this? And the, the greater question is to, to ask Jesus, you know, how, how does David take care uh, and help uh, and feed and, and supply needs for, for, you know, 8, 10, 12 people? How does he do that? And not ask me, but ask Jesus Christ. Because in, in, in reality, the answer is, is you got to ask Jesus, because I don't know. I don't know. On average, I, I probably make 
fifty dollars a week. I mean, not even that. You know that that's not even on average. I mean, if you averaged it out over a whole year, ten dollars a week. Wow. Well, okay, that's a lie, man. Because not even that. And if I did and do went out and I did have a, a opportunity to get get some money, it's usually I don't even see it. You know, less than. However long it takes to walk right over to somebody else and can it give it to them? And uh, another question you asked Jesus: Ask Jesus Christ, how does Dave take care of those people and not carry a burden? Ask Jesus Christ that question. How does he do that and not carry a, a, a burden? You know, and a lot of it comes down to people don't see the work of, of God as having any worth or value. And I'm not, I'm not trying to shame you. I'm not trying to complain. And in the end, I'm not asking you for anything. I want you to ask God, Jesus Christ, our, our Heavenly Father. How does Dave do that and not carry a, a burden? How does he do that? You know, there's one thing that I found in life. It's very hard uh, to to tell when you have a group of people, and especially young kids. You know, you ever met 18, 17, 50, 16 year olds? Did they have you ever seen them eat? You're like, yeah, man, I know all about that stuff. Yeah, I know. And, and to to tell one of those people, no, no, you you, I don't have enough food for you. Which person do you tell I don't have enough food for? And in the end, that's where I learned fasting. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess I'd rather not eat than tell you no. And you say, well, why don't you go get a job? And I tell everybody, hey, man, I work for Jesus Christ. I work for Jesus Christ. The kingdom of everlasting love and no brotherly love, neighborly love, all that thing. That I work for that guy. Why? And I, I, I tell you the truth. I don't know why. I, I, I didn't say, Dave, I'm, today I'm going to uh, quit my job and, and go work for Jesus Christ and I'm going to give up you know, $70,000 a year and, and all the pain and suffering that that, that brought in my life. I'm going to give up all of that and, and uh, accept the, the clothing God gave me and just uh, be, be, be God's child, you know, be a servant of the Lord. You know, I didn't just do that. You know, way back 20 years ago as a young kid, 1994, I had a vision of the Lord, from the Lord. And tell me, give me instructions, man. Tells me, don't cut your hair, and don't be getting married, and don't have children. And of course, you know, you break all the rules first. And then you come to find out, boy, uh, all those instructions came from God. And you know how I know they came from God? Because when I didn't follow the instructions, I got punished. You get punished, and that's how I know it's from God. And plus, it was all biblical. You know, why did you cut your hair? One of the reasons I cut my hair, you know, I had a nice long hair. And didn't cut it for three straight years. And even in 1994, I, I all of a sudden grew all my hair out and everything because that vision I had, and that encounter I had with the Lord tells me, you know, hey, you're, one day you're going to tell the world that Jesus is coming. And I assured the angel, I assured Jesus Christ that he came to the wrong place and no, I wasn't. And, and he said, no, you will. Yeah, you, you will. And I told him, no, you go tell Jesus, no, I won't. And he told me this, I don't know, angel of the Lord, this encounter I had said to me, you tell him yourself because I will not tell him no. You tell him. Well, I was like, <laughs> well, I ain't going to tell him no. <laughs> right? 
right? And so then 20 some odd years later, you know, here, here I am preaching to the Lord. And I told him, hey, if there's one person on earth that nobody would listen to, it's me. I'm telling you, Lord, I'm the guy that if there was anybody on earth that, that would you ever ask to be your spokesman, for sure those people would, would not listen to me. For sure, Lord, I'm telling you. And, and this was his response. Do it anyway. Just just do it anyway. I was like, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Who am I, what am I going to tell? What? And, well, for right now, all I want you to do is you don't go buying any houses. You don't go buying any cars. You, you don't own anything. And you just take those things, your clothes on your back, and I want you to go on a journey through a wilderness. And in that, find out what John the Baptist did and do that and you will be fine. One day I'll return, and, and, and I'll tell you what's, what to say. But for now, I'll just do these things. Trust in the Lord. I, I remember I, uh, 20 years old, you know, 1994, and I go to the pastor, and he was an old man. He's 70 years old. Well, I grew up, in talking to him, I grew up Methodist and Baptist and everything. And at that time, it was Presbyterian Church. And, all right, angel of the Lord came to me and I said, I'm going to preach the word of God. And I need to go, what do I do? Go to ministry school? Where do I go? No, I don't know. He didn't tell you where to go. <laughs> it's like, I never, and he's a 70 year old man, preacher at the church. I never met anybody in my whole life. Talked to an angel of the Lord. Never. I won. Only you. I ain't gonna tell you what to do. The only advice I can give you is to follow the Holy Spirit. You, 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 guy like you shouldn't go to ministry school. Guy like I, I don't know what, what you should do. This is the pastor of the church. You should follow the Holy Spirit. If what you're telling me is the truth, then you trust God. And He will guide you wherever you need to go. Trust in that. I took that guy's advice, right? And then 20 years and go on through life and have to learn and all those things. And why do you do what you do? I wasn't, because I, Jesus said, that's why. Not, not because I have anything to gain. Hey, hey, ask these, ask these children that live here. How do you guys eat? Uh, and don't ask them. Ask Jesus Christ. Ask God. How do you guys do that? You know, one of the boys that are here, that's the thing. I don't ask. I didn't ask these children to come here. God said, here they are. What are you going to do with them? You know, my, my son lost his mom in 2012. One of his friends lost his mom when he was eight years old. Both of them, I had witnesses to their death. The other boy was abandoned by his family because he accidentally walked in on his stepmother having sex with, with the stranger, not his father. And so they abandoned him. And do you think, anybody, here's the thing, do you think anybody who would abandon their own children pay child support or, or care? Or, or any of those things. And so you say, well, how do you do that, man? And last thing, and then I make these videos, and when you tell people you work for God, you know, they like, right on, I'll pray for you. You know how many prayers I've got in heaven stored up in God? And I always ask the same thing. If you ever meet God, Jesus Christ, there in the heavenly realms before I do, just, just tell him one thing. I did meet David, and he was love.
I said, that's the only other thing I've ever asked. Just, just tell him that. I met him, and when I met him, I found out he, he was love. You know, I had another young boy come in, live with us. Uh, married a, a woman, and <laughs> didn't work out. I don't know. Didn't work out. But but still, was able to, to love her son enough to, to allow her son to live with us for months and months. Take care of him. And again, ask Jesus Christ how his mom didn't care. <laughs> you know, I don't even talk to her anymore. Not not because I I, I don't try. It's because they just re she refused to talk to me. But still, care for her child. You know that's the thing. I, guess. I do practice what I preach. We all should practice what I preach. And I'm not saying go out and go get you a foster family and be a foster parent. I'm saying God placed these people here and said, uh, what, now, these same people have been written off by, by society. If you've seen my boys, you, you wouldn't see a Christian. You wouldn't. And when I go walking into a church like this, they, they don't see nothing but a homeless person. It's one of the reasons I cut my hair. Because it's true. It's what the Bible says right there in, in Book of Proverbs. And the homeless are fools. And that's it. It don't matter what they have to say. or They could have all the wisdom and logic in the world, but, but when it comes from them, it's coming from a fool. But when a rich man speaks, everybody listens. It's amazing how the, the Congress, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, the Trump, and all the Republicans, in, in just a few months' time, can raise over, if you put them all together, a trillion dollars, like, more money than the United States got. So, so they can all put their claim on wanting to be the president of the United States. Uh, like, think about it, guys. Billion, okay, 90 trillion, a billion dollars. Tweet them all. You know, you got 200 million here, three, 400 million here, 100 million here. Oh, Tom, well, these guys own money. Billion here. And all that money that you can generate right there. Just to, just to say, I want to be the president, and, but the workers of God, oh, thank God you, you donate your, your life and everything and your whole being. You know, every man should have, have value in this world, and sometimes we wonder, how, how valuable is this? And one of the things is, because my boys have been written off, and I sure I'd love to teach everybody in my town, but but in my town, I'm literally, we are literally known. Everybody knows us, and, and this is how we are known. We are the crazy Jesus people. That this is this is who we are. And we are known in our town. We are known. Mayor, everybody knows us. We are the crazy Jesus people. How do you crazy Jesus people take care of ten people? And I, I with all your heart, go home and, and sit there tonight and pray and ask Jesus how. And how do you do it without carrying any burden? Any burden. And I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. It's amazing. Ooh. Oh, they, oh, let's go feed you know, the Africa. Let, let, uh, let's go feed those guys. Let's go feed the world and, and everything. Feed and do and, and all this. And all the while, we, we, the, the, the workers of Jesus Christ are starved to death. Because of what the true workers of Jesus are, are, are like this. I would never, 
I'll take your food. And I would never shame you for eating it. We eat, uh, we're Christians, you know, we eat a lot of pork. I eat a lot of pork, because that's how I can afford. I can't afford beef hamburger or beef. So you eat what you can afford. You know, in this day and age, I mean, come on, look at it, guys. This day and age, uh, we got a family here, and, and one person in this family works, and, and they get $10 an hour. Ten people live off of $10 an hour in this world. And, and ask Jesus Christ, how do you do it, man? Because cause this is the only answer I got for you guys is ask him, because I don't know. I don't know. And do I have a burden? Well, I, no, I don't. Honestly. <laughs> because all I can do is trust him. And, and if my faith and trust isn't in him, who oh, oh. said, don't worry, you, you will. Don't, don't worry, I'll, I'll be with you. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> <coughs> All my faith and trust it is in him. We didn't have a plan, we didn't come up with an idea. Oh, I'm gonna go create a church or I'm gonna go do anything or anything. I don't know. I'm just wing it. <laughs> Why wing it? I'll just follow the Holy Spirit wherever Jesus Christ leads me is where I'm being led to. So wherever I am is where he is. Same for you. Same for you. Wherever you are, there, there, there he is. You know? Whatever God has given us, he asks us, can you be faithful with what I've given you? This is the, the promise he gave me. <laughs> now, trust me. And, not, and he said, don't go buy houses and cars and things of this world. Trust me. Trust him, man. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's easy. You know, that's the thing is. A lot of people, me as well, I wanted to, in a time in my life, I, I really wanted to have that wonderful farm. And all that place, like a community style living and living out there in neighborly love and sure that would be awesome but, you know especially like them Amish people I mean cool man and but if it was God's will I, it would be possible and so for me it's not not God's will like for me I, I wanted to be married tried two times to be married and, and the angel of the Lord said no no married for you now I come to impart my life where I guess yeah married to Jesus Christ <laughs> You know, Jesus says some people are made this way, you know, made eunuchs by a hand of man. Some people choose this way and other people, uh, God's in control. And if you could just accept this, then, then it will be better for you. Remember Jeremiah said, him. he wanted to be married, he had a loved one. Not allowed, got to work for God. And it's tough, you know, when, when times are getting lean, you know, and you don't have a lot of food or... A lot of stuff, and a month, two months behind on the rent, you know, and well, where's, what's going to happen, and stressful. Yeah, I want to go back to the world, I want to go back to work, I want all the money, and then Jesus, no, but, but work for me. Work for, for me. You know? I remember there's a couple of really nice people, really nice people I met along the way, and Oh, I want to uh, bless you, man. I want, oh, wonderful. That would be so great, you know. Uh, by blessing me, you're actually blessing many people. Man, they send me this thing. I don't know, something. A piece of jewelry <laughs> that you could hook on, on your, your prayer song. And this is my prayer song. I wear mine every day, wherever I go. <laughs> hook on this thing so, so you're what do you want to fall off your head? Prayer song. Boy, 
boy, and it's weird because in my videos and in my teachings and all that, I'm against idols. I'm against those things. Idols. You know. How oh, here take this this piece of this metal and, and hook your thing together and where'd you get that? Oh I I bought it from Israel in forty bucks. Gates okay, so, so you fed a bunch of idol makers who don't believe in Jesus Christ. Wow, cool. And then gave me the, 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 the reward of the idol. Wow, cool. Thank you very much and may God bless you. You take their idol and <laughs> Yeah, thanks, thanks for believing in Jesus Christ and the teaching and instruction of God and, and all those things and uh, now I'm going to take my money and go feed uh, uh, people who don't believe in God and, and purchase one of their idols from an idol maker and, and then give it to, to the uh, man of God who says, I hate idols. Wow. And I thank you. God bless you. Another person sent me like all their jewelry. One time. Send me, sends me a bunch of jewelry. And again, you just look at this jewelry, <laughs> earrings and things. What am I going to do with this stuff? And then that's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. How am I going to take care of these people? You know what I said? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Jesus, forgive me. I'm not going to. I'm gonna trust you just like you said. That's that's what that's what I got. That's what I've been given. This is what he gave me. Faith. And then when he gave me that faith, he said, now I'm gonna let that faith grow to a spot that, that I want you to share that with others. And I'm not and again I'm not complaining. I I'm blast by God right now. Very blessed, especially when I look into the world in Syria, other places. Very blessed. You know, my, my, these boys are afraid. They, if they could live in any country on earth, they would choose not to live in the United States of America. And, and, and this is the reality. It is the greatest country on earth. But because God protects it. It's a gift to the Gentiles in the same way Israel, the Canaan, was a gift to Israel. It's a gift. A place to do, live and worship God without fear. It's like Moses. We, we want to cross over the ocean so we can worship our God without fear. That's going to give my boys a better future for tomorrow. Is, is you seeing them as being worthy of that tomorrow? Having a place in that day. And, that, and that's what motivates me a lot. Plus, Jesus said, do it. And, and you know, you can look at my, I don't have millions of viewers or followers or people watching the videos. And trust me, if there's anybody who knows that I have every, every right to just walk away. And I would be justified. I won't. <laughs> I won't. Be, be, because I know Jesus is, is with me. You know, that's the thing. I didn't... My father wasn't a pastor. I didn't come from a long line of pastors and preachers. and All those things. I, God said, you you do this for me. And he said, you will. And I just trust in him. Trust in him. I want to read you a little something from the Bible. Oh, everything I talk about is from the Bible. That's why a lot of people get sick of hearing me. I don't talk a whole lot about my story or my life. Although I got... 8, 10, 12 hours of my life all out there for you guys. If you ever wanted to know who Dave is, uh, it's there. 
But I don't talk a lot about it. I tell you the stories after the Bible and Bible and Bible and Bible. 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 Because <laughs> that's the answer, you know. It's God is the answer. So I want to read to you a story of, you know, uh, where does Dave get his motivation? to do these things, and where does Dave find the, the, the faith to do these things for, uh, for, for just the sake of Jesus Christ, just for his name's sake, because he said, if you would, uh, open your Bible to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 35. And the Lord just gets done chewing out Eli and his sons for blaspheming God. And so God says, I'm going to do a new thing. And he begins to explain it. And he says, I will choose a faithful priest who shall do what I have in my heart and mine. I will establish a lasting house for him which shall function in the presence of my anointed forever. Then whoever is left of your family will come to grovel before him for a piece of silver or a loaf of bread and will say, Appoint me, I beg you, to priestly function that I may have a morsel of bread to eat. Right? See, see God's going to appoint the, the people who have a heart for His will, have a heart for His word, who were chosen by Him to, to shame those other priests that are living in, in greed. Greed of devouring the... the, the you know, the, the sheep, feeding themselves off of the sheep instead of helping the sheep. And they will come groveling to the priest. And, and Jesus Christ is high priest. High priest. And those whom he chooses are, are part of his family. Yeah, he, in, in the kingdom of, of Jesus Christ, there, there are pastors out there. There are teachers out there. There are healers out there. And there are prophets out there. And there are just simple children out there. That there's the very smallest out there. And there's the greatest out there. And this is all out there working together for his kingdom. And they carry no title other than a son of God. We are just a son of God. Not called by men, not by church, church organizations, any of those nature but by God. Chapter 3 says, During the time young Samuel was ministered to the Lord under Eli, a revelation of the Lord was uncommon and visions infrequent. One day Eli was asleep in his usual place. His eyes had, late, his eyes had lately grown so weak that he could not see. The lamp of God was not yet extinguished, and Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here am I. He ran to Eli and said, Here am I. You called me. You, you called me. Here, here am I. I. I remember those words really uh, mean a lot to me in my life because uh, I, I was, while going through the, the process of the quickening of the Holy Spirit, you know, there's like a quickening of the body, a quickening of the mind. You know, uh, the delight uh, uh, is different. It's not as bright. I, don't, I can't explain it. I don't know. How to explain it? It just is not as bright. Light, sunlight, light. Uh, there's a total quickening of, of the body. Something happened to me. 
And one of the things that when it was going on, this happened over, uh, i say, six, eight months period of this quickening of the spirit, or quickening of the body, this quickening of the Holy Spirit. And I'm reading the, the book of Enoch, of all, and like the internet, see the internet has all this stuff out there. And so I was reading through it, you know, and wondering a little bit about it. And uh, about halfway through it, you know, a, a, a whisper, a voice comes in my head. And, and, you know, I was staying with Jesus. He always uses your name. He says, David, you know, I want you to read the Holy Bible. I want you to read the Bible, and I want you to read the book of Revelation. Right? And I hadn't really been, I was looking all over, and, and God, and the Internet, and all this stuff. Not really reading a whole lot of the Bible. I had a Bible all my life. Twelve years old, I was given a gift. I got baptized the Bible, and I had that Bible. But really, I couldn't learn how to read until later in my 20s. Way late, mid, later 20s did I learn how to read or, or be able to understand what I read. Very difficult, very hard. I had dyslexia. <laughs> I'm writing a book right now, and I got dyslexia. Go back and read it. Now I need to fix it. <laughs> need to fix it. <laughs> what a struggle, man. What a struggle it was to go through school, life, having that. But God prevents. You know? Anyway, so I'm reading that thing and Jesus says, you know, or a voice and man, hey, read the, David, read the book of Revelation, right? And, and <clears throat> so I'm, <clears throat> there's my Bible, you know, I didn't even have to go searching for it, man. <laughs> it was sitting right there, and I, I didn't, I don't know how it was there. It was just there. And so I picked it up, man, and started reading. I read the entire book of uh, Revelation, and I said, in my heart, I'm praying to Jesus, I don't understand the word of it, Lord. None of it. Really? And, and, and Jesus says, this, this was his answer. Here I am. Right here I am. Here I am. I am right here. And, and that was the answer. tell you all everything about what that book means today. <laughs> I tell you what it means. Not, not because I know, but because Jesus, you called? Here I am. You, you need wisdom? Here I am. You, you can't find me in Enoch. You can't find me out there. You can't find me in other, any other place than right here. Here I am. You called? Here I am. And sometimes in today, I, we, we will wonder, you know, I got Jesus Christ living in me. And there's people, you know, you're, you're all of a sudden you come and you meet somebody and they're full of bitterness and strife and dying and, ah, they died and everybody's cheering and, and wonderful. Thank God that wretch died, you know. And, well, but here's a little old person, you know, oh, I, I just, boy, I, I'm praying for them. I don't know if they were saved, but, but I'm praying for them and their salvation and that God would have mercy on them. You know, I, I know how bitter that they were in life, but, but I know what broke them to become so bitter. So, so I'm praying for them. And, and, and the thing is, is, it's the Spirit of Christ that cries out, Abba, Father. And God, you say, well, I don't know. I hope my prayer, God would hear my prayer. And God saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. You see, we cry out for that which he wants. He wants. Did, did God save him? Well, if the cry came out and he called, and somebody's dying in complete bitterness. And here you are. Here I am. To 
to pray for you. See, see, Jesus is mercy. It's all about his, his mercy. He goes on to say, The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. And again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. You know, I, I remember in my life, 20 years ago I had that vision. And, he, and the angel said, one day when, when I return to you, uh, it will be after you come at to the end of this long journey through the wilderness, and there I'll, I'll meet you on the top of a mountain. Two times. Top of a mountain. It was, it was my birthday. Eighth day I was born. The eighth day. I was on top of the mountain on the eighth day, on my birthday, during the harvest time, September. And, and we're up there and, and began to, to prophesy over my son, began to tell my son and prepare my son, not knowing that, that, that his mother was going to die seven days later began to prophesy and prepare him for what it was like to, 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 to experience another human dead body. And I don't know where this came from. I know we're standing around the campfire here on the top of the mountain out elk hunting on, on my birthday in Colorado at 11,000 feet. And begin to, to, to explain and, and I was around the campfire 10 o'clock at night Begin explaining to my son uh, about death and how different it was that a, a human being compared to, to an animal. What that was like. Seven days later, his mom dies. On that day, she died. You know, my son witnessed that, and he's there with her comes running home, we weren't living together, comes running home, she just lived two blocks away. And you could hear him screaming from two blocks away all the way until he got to home, to the point we're out on the, on the porch looking around going, who is that kid screaming murder, bloody murder? Somebody's in really bad trouble. And, and along with all that's my kid. Mine. What's going on? My mom is dead. I'll get out of here. What do you mean my mom is dead? No, oh, she's dead. Gone. See, by the time when he found her, he picked her up and she was frozen in life. Not, not like a see on TV, a dead body. Like frozen in time. Stiff as a bar. And he's a young boy. Picked his mama up like that. It's tough. Comes home and all the family and everybody's sitting here screaming, man. They're screaming. Everybody's screaming. Sister, mother, son, cousins. Everybody's crying out hard, loud. Great weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Great sadness. Real tragedy. Now everybody's all in a group hug, kind of just in there hugged on each other and all hugging each other and trying the best we can to, to stay sane, <laughs> keep it together. <laughs> but it was at that moment when we were doing that, that, that like a lightning bolt, great loud voice this time, David. Do you, do you feel, and I, I just tell you at that time in my life, I, I felt love more intense than, than I ever really felt in my life. Love, care, adrenaline, I, like everything was uh, on fire, sparked, full to its fullest. Full awareness, full thinking, full wisdom, everything was at its fullest. 
Jesus, you feel that love you have for your son and your wife and your family. You feel that? Yes. That's how much I love you. That's how much I love you. Do you feel how tense that is? That's how much I love you. And, and, and Jesus says, Jesus Christ says, and if I love you that much, if I love you that much, don't you think I love all the world that much? He didn't say to Christians. He said all the world. Do you think, don't you think I love all the world that much? Just like that. No, I'm, I'm not answering. I'm just like, And then he says, now that's what I want you to do. I want you to go tell them how much I love them. David, I want you to go tell them I've heard their prayers. David, I want you to go tell them I'm coming soon. Go and tell them that. This is what I want you to tell them. All hope is in Jesus Christ. Heard your prayers. I hear everything. I know who you are. And I'm coming soon. Right. And I'm telling the truth. He's not coming to destroy the earth. He's coming for you. For the bride. How glorious is that? He's coming for you to take you home, to, 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 to answer the almighty prayer that he said, that he said, if there's one prayer you're going to pray, pray this prayer. Deliver us from the hand of the evil one. And Jesus Christ said, hey, go tell them this. I have heard your prayer and I am coming soon. He loves you with all of his heart, mind, and soul. That's how much he loves you. And he is going to deliver you from the hand of the evil one. I promise. Wouldn't have told me if it wasn't true. <laughs> He goes on to say here in Samuel's story. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him yet. Remember, he's a young boy who is dedicated to, to the Lord by his mother. She basically just dropped him off at the temple and said, Eli, he's a gift from God, and I promised God that I would... Uh, dedicate him to the Lord. He's yours now. You're the high priest. Teach him well. Right? The Lord called Samuel again for a third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he, had, so he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and, and if you are called, reply. Speak, Lord, for I am your servant, or your servant is listening. Now I'm listening. Speak, God, I'm listening now. You got my attention. Now that I know who you are, now, now that I know what's up, uh, speak. So Samuel does exactly that. And again the Lord comes and then says to Samuel. And Samuel says, Speak, Lord, I'm your servant. Oh, this is what I want you to say, Samuel. 
Go tell Eli, that old fart, that I'm going to tear him down and his children for the blaspheming that they have done to me. <sighs> Little boy. He's like, all right, and he goes to sleep, wakes up in the morning, and, and Eli, hey, Samuel, did the Lord come and talk to you? Yeah, he, he sure did. What did he say? What did he say? I don't know. I don't want to tell you, man. Uh, nothing. No, don't lie to me. If the Lord came and spoke to you, I want you to tell me everything he said. You hold back nothing. And if whatever you hold back on against me, whatever you don't tell me, may the Lord give it to you. Okay, the Lord said he's going to kill you and your sons and everything for the blasphemy you have done to him. You, you, he's mad at you, Eli. Your sons have been out there beating people down, keeping great greedy eye over all the sacrifices. Hoarding everything and not helping nobody out there, and God's going to punish you for that. Well, the Lord, the Lord judges best. Okay. You know, that's kind of like in my life, in, in my world, you know. Uh, I, I didn't choose Jesus Christ. I didn't. God chose my, me. You know, it's like Paul said, I, I can't even judge anybody on the earth because I can, I can only, really, all I can do is accept the, the judgment of Jesus Christ. He's judging, the, they judged the world already, it's already been judged, and, and this was the judgment. <laughs> all of us, unworthy, fell short of the grace of God of his glory. We all fell short. We all went our own way. And it's only through the forgiveness of, of that going our own way, the forgiveness of our sins, which comes through the, the life of Jesus Christ. Do we find life? I accept that. It's truth. I just accept his word as truth. I don't have to obtain salvation. I'm telling you, everybody on this earth, you, you are saved. Are you willing to accept that? The, the sacrifice has been made. He, the atonement has been made. He doesn't waiting to atone for your sins. The sins of, have been made. It's been made. The atonement is done. You know, that's the, the thing. Is it enough? That's what Jesus says. Is it enough? I, I sacrificed all my all. He sacrificed his life and all that. And then he says, is it enough? Is it enough? No, Lord, it's not enough. I got to do some more. I got to work. I got to do. I'll prove to you that. When, when I'm done, when I'm extinguished, then that'll be enough. And he said, why? Why? Isn't what I've done for you enough? Just accept that. It's true. You know, Jesus never told me, you know, go, go baptize the people in water. See, that's that thing with wormwood, you know, and you turn that water in, into blood. See, John came baptizing with water. But, but Jesus baptizes in the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then, he, you know, once you got it, you understand it. And you say, wow, Lord, I, I got you, and I understand, I, I, I know you, and I know you're here, and all these things, and wow, Jesus, let's just change the whole world, and, and then you can get frustrated in trying to do that. Jesus says this, pick up your cross and follow me. You, you really want to 
exercise your faith that then just follow me. Pick up my cross. What is that, that burden? Of, uh, it's not a burden. Is it a burden? This world sucks and it will always suck except that. Is it good enough? Everything we have been given in life, is it good enough? Is the, sac is the crucifixion good enough? Is that good enough? Are we going to tell God it's not good enough, God? Need more! Because that wasn't good enough. I don't accept it. Right? Love? It's not good enough. I don't love me good enough. I don't care for me good enough. This world ain't good enough. But everything God has given us came from God. When, when is it going to be good enough? You know, you can't tackle all the poor on earth. God says, impossible. Why? I made the poor. Why do you want to extinguish the poor? Those are God's chosen people. <laughs> you know? Yeah, see, man, people who send it, go down to Haiti, you know, they have all the hurricanes and all the stuff, and, and then all of a sudden everybody sends their teddy bears and their clothes and the shoes, and, and there they got a whole mountain of clothing. And all the poor people just walk on the mountain of clothing like a big soft mountain and just roll down it and play and, you know, walking around on the big candy rock candy mountain, you know. They're still poor. Things, things don't make you rich. Things don't make you poor. This is the value that you have given them that comes from your own heart. Neither poor nor rich. This, that's God's child. It's God's child. Neither poor nor rich. Right? So when we divide poor and rich, God's not good enough. Not enough. Right? Oh, if you were just like me, it might be good enough. But even I can't be just like me. I'm a fakey myself. Right? I put on a fake image when I go to work or church. Then when I'm at home, that's where the real me comes out. Now, I've seen that. That's the part where some people want to live in honesty. It's better to be honest and uh, let God deal with the consequences. I know that's the thing. I never ask you for anything. I never tell you, no, I wouldn't accept your blessing. You want to bless me, that's fine. I am blessed. But if you want to know where, how does how does Dave function? How does Dave does this, does this work? And that's the thing I got. Boys here. All the time in this house, 10 boys, 18 year olds. That are all written off, man. They're struggling. Self esteem, self worth, depression, and it's becoming from the rejection of the world, rejection of their neighbors. That's Jesus Christ. How does David take care of ten people without a burden? Ask. You know, that's the thing. Uh, this is me. You ever seen me out there? You know, this is the guy you're going to meet. Oh, I probably see me with my glasses on, you know. Like that. So I wanted you to know. I, I remember I went to the church, you know, and local church, and new people come in from Florida, old church, and uh, they, they're, they're spill, you know, they have, a, you know, like this, they tell you who they are, and every third Sunday of the month, they, same thing, you know, just like it's written down program, tell you, you know, okay, it's meet and greet the pastor, and 
Although I've given my phone number out to him many times, trying to email him, talk to him, all these things. They, they won't talk to you outside of that. And if you want to meet and greet them, you got to go to their little thing. And outside of that, you, it's, you don't meet them. You don't no contact, you know. And again, they, they try and have little small groups and then and if you go to their group, sure. But in that, even when you go to the groups and all that, and you, you don't gain a friend. Hand out hundreds of phone numbers, phone numbers to people, just trying to be friends. Don't even gain friends. But anyway, one of their spills is, is uh, one of the reasons they come to Florida is because the guy, you know, he, he's fourth, fifth generation son of a pastor, of a pastor, of a pastor, of a pastor. And then he went to college, to, to ministry school, you know, uh, uh, I believe like Oral Roberts or whatnot. But, Christian school, and then, you know, while he's there, he falls away from God and that, and then finds God, and in that, Jesus gives him a revelation, and, hey, I want you to go to Denver and preach in Denver, and that's what he says, that's why I'm here, Jesus told me to come to Denver, Colorado, preach the word, you know, and, and I'm not nothing against these guys. But, you know, one of the elders of their group, who, who uh, 29 year old kid, who rides his bike from all the way from Florida, seven weeks rides his bike, bicycle all the way here, very determined young man for, for the Lord. Yeah, he ends up, he's staying at my house for six months, living at my house and that, and talking to him and that, and come to find out, actually, the honesty, the truth is, the reason they chose to come to Denver was because they did a nationwide survey. And they came to find out that, that in nationwide, Denver and Seattle, some of these other places, uh, it's like the, the Christianity or the percentage of people who go to church was like below 20% or whatever statewide. They, they did a nationwide search to find out where would our place fit the best. <laughs> And I remember, you know, the guy, our buddy who was here, stayed and lived with me for six months, said they were mad when they got to Denver and found out there was a church on every corner. <laughs> they were mad. What the heck is this? There's a church everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. But, but I, I, that's the thing, I, I have nothing to gain, I, I wrote, I just here to, to tell you what, what Jesus Christ wants you to know. That, that's what I'm here to tell you. What Jesus wants you to know. So I'm here to support you in prayer, because I know, this is what I know. He hears your prayer. He hears your prayer. I know this. And so I want to, Pray with you, because I know you hear your prayer. You told me. I, I want to be your friend because I, he told me how much he loved you. And, and I know, I know how much he loves you. And I want to be your friend. I, I feel like it's a great honor to just even be your friend because, man, if Jesus Christ loves you that much, wow, what an honor it is to, to be a, a friend of a friend of Jesus Christ. And then, I just wanted to comfort your heart. He has hurt you. And he's coming to, to make good on that prayer. Make good on that word. That promise. The promise. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will be with you. All the way to the very end. That's what Jesus said. And so, if you're going to follow along through the videos, I'm going to have step three will be coming as we have the 12 steps of, of unveiling the book of Revelation. 12 steps to overcoming doubt. 12 steps to overcoming childhood abuse. 12 steps to, to restoring your life. And if you want to be a part of that, if you want to hear what the Lord has to say to us today, Come and be a part of that. Be a part of that. But just recognize that 
I wish you would all ask one question. Ask Jesus Christ, how does Dave do it? And how does he do it without carrying a burden? Do that for me. See you next time.